Uh, and I finally finished to build this uh, object. Uh, this is a well-known statue of an antique uh, civilization, a known and antique civilization. Uh, this uh, object uh, took uh, me some time because I had a little problem while trying to print it all the time. It was uh, just uh, fucked up and I think I've understood why uh, I had several errors, mistakes or problems. It's uh, because of the fact that uh, the extruder head, uh, the extruder head uh, was um, all the time, all the time here, was all the time um, hitting some solid parts of the objects and um, I believe that I had to preserve a kind of a friction between the extruder head and uh, the top layers of the object and in fact this it wasn't my best idea because all the time the extruder head uh, was just hitting some solid parts of the of the object and it was all the time uh, producing some mistakes error I, I, it was just uh, uh, fucking all the printing process. So uh, when you level the the plate, manually level the plate, it said that you have to uh, to use this uh, uh, to use this card, and that the the extruder head uh, don't um, you shouldn't let any trace and there should be enough space to let the this card uh, go between the plate and the extruder head it said that you have to use this card as a reference uh, when leveling your uh, when leveling your plate but uh, the true reference is that you shouldn't encounter any kind of friction any kind of friction between the extruder head and this card for example because if you encounter any kind of friction during the printing process, you uh, there are more and more risks that the extruder had met something during the printing process. And since this printing process uh, consists in building an object layer after layer, if the printing process encounters one layer and hit one layer, the object just the objects is just uh, uh, there is a shock and the print printer head uh, is blocked and everything can go wrong then so truly don't let any kind of friction happen in fact and you can see that this object I couldn't make it I didn't understood why uh, while um, enlarging the distance between the extruder and the plate just a little bit before any kind of any kind of friction could appear uh, let me say that this this time it's successful process let me say that do not let any kind of friction bother you uh, during the printing process uh, if you want to to know how to remove uh, the objects uh, from the plate, you can do it by uh, with with your with your strength by brute force. But you can use something more delicate, more subtle. I mean, for example, a kind of Swiss Army knife or something like that. And if you had uh, if you have a knife, just use the knife and just put the knife just under the object, enlarge it, do it like that, and the object will just be removed and there won't be any trace anymore in the plate and I'm, I'm going to show you how I, how I do well it's not that difficult you see you take you take for example this it won't let any any trace on the do you hear this is the sign okay the head is glued the head is glued and there is the first filament here so this is uh, this is uh, frankly this is a successful object no burned part on it and I realized that the burned parts just come from the fact that the printer head 
the, the extrusion head is very hot and when it encounters some solid parts or some freshly solidified parts of the, the object the problem is that this uh, uh, this extrusion head very hot is just burning the underlying material and that's why it becomes uh, it becomes uh, ugly and it becomes it, it takes a, a strange color it's because of the fact that uh, the head is too hot and when you enlarge enough the space between the extrusion head and the plate just enough just before any kind of friction appears here is the result it's a nice looking solid object without any kind of errors in it and maybe a little a little one here a little one here here you can see there is a, a little a little filament here you see and this is just a little mistake because of the fact that this uh, printing method is uh, you see a little mistake here but this is logical because uh, this face is is strange you've got the mouse here and you get the top of the face there and there is nothing here, nothing here um, in terms of a layer to uh, to be consistent consistent enough because everything is based on a layer that 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 is uh, built on the top of another layer so if you start by the beginning here and if it doesn't have any layer here this object lacks of something this point here lacks of something and that's why the printer have some difficulties to to make something very accurate here especially on this point every other point of the other layers do not encounter that kind of problem because there is something underlying that you can use to make something so the ideal objects are object that have a strong and solid base and space enough on the underlying layers to build something on the top of it uh, you get to be very careful uh, when you place uh, the objects in the software solution because if you do not place correctly the object they won't the printer won't be able in fact to to build it correctly and with the makeable to replicator you can build uh, uh, very complex forms it takes uh, lots of time but you can build what we call impossible objects for example this one this is an object I've just built and this is uh, an object that is based on a cube uh, with uh, several holes here and this cube let, let you see that there is in fact a kind of uh, ball inside and this is a ball that is uh, uh, in fact realized with the melted little stars as you can see I'm going to show you it like that this is a cube but there is a ball inside and uh, this uh, very compact ball uh, cannot be cold inside the little holes so the ball is larger than little holes here and the cube is perfectly closed so technically uh, you cannot really build this uh, object with uh, traditional methods uh, only a 3D printer can uh, build this kind of thing without, uh, without any mistake and this is a, a successful object as you can see and this is my first uh, impossible object it is not really obvious 
to see that it is impossible to build it in conventional ways but if you uh, I will probably make another impossible object later on in so that you can really see that uh, this kind of uh, 3D printer technology can allow you, you to to build very uh, interesting things and surprising things and this is another attempt to build a, a statue well, this is a statue of a well-known uh, uh, Paris so as you can see uh, this time it works uh, it works for two reasons the first one is that I I've cleansed uh, a bit the, the, the plate before uh, starting the printing process and the second reason is that I've low, lowered a bit uh, uh, the, the object I mean that uh, it, on, in the software I just lower it from one millimeter the statue down so that it perfectly it is cut at is cut, it is cut uh, in the bottom here and uh, while um, I did this uh, the good thing is that I'm sure then that it, it is not uh, unstable uh, in the bottom and I've also added uh, that it's a little uh, it's a first uh, The first line you see and it is well glued on the bottom of the, the object and uh, it adds more stability uh, and finally if there is a, a kind of a glitch here on the top or if there is a little thing that for example that there is a mistake or if the, the head uh, encounters more friction the the statue it, it keeps keeps a stable attitude and uh, it stays on the plate so there are several things to do uh, in the software part to to lower the risks to lose the to lose the printing process uh, in the end just make the base more s stable in the software and uh, cleans the plate cleans the plate before starting the printing process and of, and of course be sure that the plate is correctly leveled uh, and avoid uh, two more two too many frictions because uh, as we could see if there is too many friction the risk that the nose encounters a solid part is, uh, is increasing and we do not want to the, the printer head uh, to create too many frictions and too many pressure on the top of the, the object because if the top of the object is encounters too many friction the bottom of the object is uh, is in danger and this is what we want to avoid the most now as you can see here the the base the first layer just uh, here I just I just chosen to to make uh, the first layer like that uh, can be easily uh, removed uh, once the printing process is finished so uh, it's just useful to add a little bit more of stability to the whole object on the plate so I can't uh, drop it now and uh, if you check the quality of the result there's nothing to say at all this is a really good quality object really solid and uh, no error no mistake at all
So the whole thing is to make it stable. Make it stable uh, because if there is a little bit of instability, the the statue is is doing like that during the process. And when the statue is a little bit on the wrong position, the head of the printer encounters some sometimes something hard and after that everything goes wrong. So this is a the secret of a successful printing. Uh, avoid models that have uh, angles higher than 45 degrees so that when it's oblique uh, it's not too hard to build uh, make something really stable uh, and most of all uh, just check regularly uh, if the plate is correctly leveled with the reference card uh, because uh, if there is any kind of difference uh, in, the, in the distance between the nozzle and the, and the plate uh, it could completely uh, lure uh, the printing process and, and everything goes wrong then so I start to understand the principle of good printing uh, my first trials were really unsuccessful. I could only print the test objects, but now I really see that uh, uh, this kind of thing works. This kind of thing works. This first object was uh, a bit fucked up here, and here, as you can see here, uh, the center of the the object uh, is simple it's a grid but when the printer works here around the object there is a level of complexity a very high level of complexity and this high level of complexity make that the the nozzle and the the printer head the extruder works a lot and there's a lot of movement here so the friction here is higher than in the middle of the object and the problem is that uh, when it when the the friction is higher uh, you've got to to make the base of the object really uh, rock solid really well glued on the base because if it's not really uh, well glued on the base each time the nozzle has to produce a little bit of friction here when working on the more complex part of the object uh, you take the risk uh, to create a kind of a, uh, that kind of moment movement in the end and this is absolutely what you to have to avoid those movements of the printer uh, this is why I, I willfully chosen to put my printer <laughs> on the ground and not on, on a desktop uh, because I on my desktop there is a kind of a shaking uh, and this is not this is not good for printing in fact and this one is also successful uh, I was a bit afraid um, during the printing process uh, that uh, this one would be also a failure because uh, uh, the first layer uh, was uh, missed. In fact, it was just uh, uh, built on the left side and not on the right side. So, uh, when playing, you see, uh, it's not perfectly stable uh, because of the fact that the first layer was uh, fucked up from the beginning. So I had to to take the the object with my finger fingers so that it's stable until the end when I was at 88% uh, but uh, anyway uh, the object is built and that's uh, the most important thing and I just have to take it from the plate and it's a pretty good looking scale uh, Celtic scale and here is another object I've just built in um, 13 minutes this is a little robot
and as you can see, uh, there's no mistakes anymore. Uh, the trick is to uh, build the first layer like that. There is an option on the software solution to help you to build this kind of uh, layer quickly in uh, just one checkbox. And, um, and no errors, uh, no, no mistakes, no the object stays on the plate and it is stable and it works. So I think I find the right method and the right configuration uh, for the printings to work. The little robot is printer friendly, as you can see, because uh, there uh, there are nothing really hard to to build. For example, this uh, this is a uh, little ears here. There are angles that are not really uh, difficult, less than 45 degrees angles, for example. So. When you get that kind of object, it, it, it always looks uh, always looks good. And the first layer, this is uh, just a, a layer, a layer for stability. Uh, it has it's it's easy to to remove. In fact, it's easy to remove because it's only composed with one one filament. So you can take, for example, it and just remove it simply. If if you get one or two filaments, you can you can just remove them with the with just easily, and then uh, the object still looks good. Uh, all right, it's cool. Well, after that, all the objects are translucent, and I'm starting to think about uh, maybe a way to uh, uh, to add more curls I've seen that there are more filaments with different colors that are available in the shop however uh, I think that some models should require uh, metallic metallic textures and maybe will I be able to use another technique to give them uh, unique colors? I'll tell you something about that later on, but um, I think that um, uh, my adventures with 3D printing are going well.